you're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Dave's RC. Toe the line episode. I don't know, guys. We've been doing this for <laughs> over two years now. Clone going on two years now. Um, yeah, guys. So uh, back here with another awesome episode for you guys. Um, don't forget we have the giveaway next week. That's one thing that I wanted to touch on with you guys. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the, in the stream about the giveaway and how that's going to go. Um, that'll be next week, though. Um, and the Dynam Meteor, you guys. I haven't flown it yet. It was way too cold for my liking to take a Dynam plane out. Um, it was about 19 degrees with the wind chill. It was probably down around like, you know, negative one, negative two with the wind chill. Uh, so we didn't we weren't gonna take a plane out in that kind of cold uh, I don't I don't really trust plastic geared servos or nylon geared servos uh, when the, when the weather's that cold uh, but we will plug it in for you guys and show you it and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how it went together uh, it, it was a little rough putting it together you guys um, when they first came out with this plane it was stubbed out for whatever 70 mil fan that they had in it uh, this 70 mil fan you needed to make a little bit of room for it and kind of open up the area a little bit. Um, I did a little bit of carving anyways to get mine to set on there uh, nice and flush. Um, when I tried just squeezing the plane together, what happened was it actually squeezed the EDF housing and it caused it so that, the, that it wouldn't spin. It was just making a weird noise. So uh, we had to go back in, loosen it up, and then and then carve out a little bit of foam just to make it make that room for the EDF to fit in there nicely. But uh, after that, it's good. I modded the hatch. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a little bit as well. I did modify the uh, the, the cover um, so that we could fit a 5,000 pack in here, and uh, it fits lovely and it CGs awesome. I can't I just can't I can't wait to get it out and fly, it, guys. It's just like I said, it's just been really really cold. Eric, how you doing, man? Doing okay. Sorry, I was chatting to people in the chat. So. Oh yeah, Eric's always keeping an eye on the chat for me, you guys. He's always he's always taking care of you guys in the chat, and I, I really appreciate him doing that. Um, RC flyby, what's up, man? Um, so Wild Bill, so I'm not, I'm not, go ahead. What's that? I was gonna say Wild Bill said he tested negative, but there's other viruses that are real similar. So just oh, that, I def I had something just like it, you guys, just like it, and like three negative tests and whatever. I mean, what are you gonna do? It is what it is. Um, you felt like crap regardless. I wasn't. I, wasn't, I, I mean, for, for I mean, I'm glad it wasn't it. You know what I mean? I'm glad that it wasn't. What it wasn't that. Um, I'm really, really glad it wasn't that, and that it was something else. Because uh, I do have children, and uh, you know, children are more susceptible to catching this stuff. And uh, and then older adults. There's there's a few old people in the neighborhood. So I'm just I'm glad it, I'm glad it didn't come to my neighborhood. My only kid that got it was sick for two days, and she only had a fever and the runs. That's it. Meanwhile, my wife and I were both sick as a dog when we had it. Yeah, Eric was floored, man. I remember, I remember him going through that whole process, and uh, yeah, he did. He wasn't doing well. Uh, it's not fun. It's no fun for anybody. Um, that's why we have. That's why we have our RC rc addictions to keep us away and keep our thoughts away from all, uh, all that crazy shit that can happen and i know it's i know that the virus has actually leveled a few of you guys um and it's i'm glad that victor you guys are right making now through. victor he should be getting over the worst of his right no he was just saying it doesn't feel so good but he's alive oh really it's still it's still yeah it's yeah i mean i remember george watts had it and uh he was pretty floored for a while. Spencer Keith in here. I see you, man. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Uh, Thought we'd break out the arm on fraction for you, buddy. Yeah, Eric. Eric. Eric was like, we should talk about the arm on fraction a little bit tonight because you were in the chat already. If we, if we wanted to scare you away. Um. But yeah, guys. So uh, the five thousand. I was able to fit a five thousand in here pretty comfortably. Um. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll see on the first flight whether I want to move it forward any more than where it's at right now. Uh, right now, it's it's right on the CG point, right right on the book CG. Um, it's nice nice and level. Um, and yes. typically, I like to go a little bit nose heavy of the CG, the recommended CG. So um, I still may go a little forward before the first, before I take off for the first time. I, I'm I'm pretty certain I will. Um, 
And then if she seems like she's she's nosing in a little bit, then we'll back the battery up. Uh, simple as that. Uh, but I definitely do like to start off more nose heavy than anything, guys. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of issues in the past where taking off on the tail heavy plane, it's just not, it's not a good deal. It's not a good deal for anyone. Um, nose heavy, you can land. Tail heavy, more, more than likely you're going to crash. And somebody told me, who heard from a little bird, that I may be getting a nice new plane from someone. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I, as you guys know, I kind of retired my F9F Panther. It's got over 100 flights on it. Um, it's just, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of beaten up a little bit. And uh, Eric was asking me, you know, if, if I wanted, which, which, which 64 millimeter plane would I, would I want if, if I had to buy, if I had to get another one right now? And uh, I was like, well, I, I mean, I tell you what, I like the MIG overall. I mean, the Panther flies great. It's my second favorite. Um, but uh, I definitely, definitely would love another MIG. And the MIGs just happened to be out of stock. So he got me another F9F Panther. And the other one's hanging on my wall in the RC room, and it's kind of retired. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, got just a, lot a of souvenir on it. now or a trophy. Yeah, it's basically a souvenir now. I mean, could I still fly it? Yeah, it could still fly. Uh, there's some repair work that needs to be done on it. The last flight that I flew, I ripped the aileron off, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the rear piece of foam kind of uh, is a two-piece connection part there, and it kind of ripped off. So, I mean, I would just have to put a couple of things back together on it, but it, uh, it's definitely cool knowing that, that Eric's going to send me a new one. That's cool. I'll fly that. I mean, I, that, that was my winter flyer for the for many, many years. You guys would see all my winter flights would be that. Well, those 64 be, millimeter paper. birds are nice because they, they have decent performance and they're small. So you can throw, just throw them in your car and go. Yeah. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. I have, I've had a lot of fun with the 64 millimeter planes uh, for motion RC. I really actually have. Um, they're really, really nice planes. They They fly great. Um, and it seems like the more you beat them up, the better they fly. Um, That's the mantra I recommend I have with planes. The, the, you got to at least get them scratched or they don't fly as well. Yeah, yeah, you got to give it some aerodynamic, uh, some, some vortex generators, a few scratches on the wingtips and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, but yeah, guys, so uh, real quick, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the donation pot for next next week's giveaway. It's practically non-existent right now, you guys. Uh, we have had uh, George Watts has put a couple of uh, has uh, put a, actually he's put a few twenty-five dollar um, uh, donations in, but other than that, guys, we don't have very many donations for next week's giveaway. So uh, feel free to donate because I'd like the giveaway to be I'd like to at least be to do two two giveaways again like we normally do. I'll put in my I'll I'll, I'll put in my two hundred fifty like I always do. And then uh, I'm hoping that you guys can help match me on the back end with that um, so that we can do a couple of giveaways. Um, but that's giveaway. neither here nor there. That's next week. Yeah, we, that, I mean, if you can't do anything this week, maybe next week um, while we're doing the giveaway, that'd be great. Just something that can go into the pot for, uh, for the giveaway. Like you guys know, all that money that you guys donate is going right back to you guys. So I just, I just want to make the most of the giveaway and at least be able to do two giveaways, um, if anything. Uh, on the subject, yeah, other than that, what's that? On the subject of the giveaway, Randy was at, just saying how he got his HSD 182 ready for the receiver once you get it out to him. All, all, every, all of those things have been sent out, you guys. They went out Wednesday, so you guys should start receiving those things probably oh, mid next week. Uh, those of you guys that are closer will probably end up getting them a little sooner. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure on how regular mail works or, or how fast it how fast it runs. I know that everything that I've gotten lately has been delayed and delayed and delayed. Um, I just received a package uh, at my mother's house. I believe it's the battery, so I need to go over there and check tomorrow Ooh, to see. If Craig Bevan's batteries. So, yeah. So Craig Bevan's batteries are probably here. So. Um, but I, I don't. I'm not expecting any other packages, so that's probably exactly uh, what it is. Sorry. Ah. Sorry, I had to check something. <laughs> so, what are you doing, airborne? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> At the bottom of this, well, I wanted to see what if the link was working for your PayPal. If you see at the bottom of the screen. Right below Dave in the green, that's his PayPal link. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, you guys, if you don't see me standing there with an L39, do not send the money. <laughs> We've had issues in the past where people have sent money and it went to the wrong person. And I still have not retrieved the funds from that guy. Um, I don't think he's friendly. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that he's willing to give the money back either. Uh, so make sure you send it to the right place because uh, unfortunately we lost out on that money. I, I, if, if you send it to the wrong place, I can't, I can't be responsible for that, you guys. Um, just make sure that if you see me standing there with an L39, you know it's my profile. And uh, that's where all the donations get sent. Um, and anything that you guys do for super chats, I'll put the, I'll pitch the money in and then PayPal or uh, YouTube will just pay me back later next month when, when the, when the check actually gets released. So, um, Jeff in lower Alabama, you need to go to the, um, painless 360 channel. He's kind of like the best guy to go to if you're having open TX issues. Um, you know who else uses OpenTX and has a lot of good videos is uh, In the Tube Deep. Yeah. In the Tube Deep has a lot of great videos um, on OpenTX and how to use it and how to set it up. Um, wow. He teaches you how to set up Telerons. He, he teaches you how to do you know your flat elevator mixing and everything. Anything and everything that you want to know about OpenTX, he does a really good job and he walks you through it right there on his computer. What were you going to say, Eric? Yeah. Mm, never mind. That's cool. RC flyby, yes, they would not give it back. No, yeah, no, no, they did not give the money back. As a matter of fact, I, re I replied to him and said, "Hey, man, uh, I believe that you got some money that was supposed to go to my PayPal, and it went to your PayPal." I said, "I'd appreciate it if you sent it back." Um, I said, "I don't want to have to take further action." Do you know what I mean? Just trying to scare the guy a little bit. And uh, he declined my request, uh, basically with the big FU. Two deuces. So yeah, Robert Artlep's right. If you the other good place to look is uh, RC Video Reviews. He's actually been doing a lot of videos on that TX sixteen or where the heck it is. What is it, Eric? What what is it? Well, TX Jeff in Lower Alabama got the Radio Master TX sixteen S. That it's it's open TX, but it's also had got a multi protocol in it, so you can fly with anything with it, basically. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. And the signal is just like FR Skies. In fact, you can buy Radio Master receivers, and they use the FR Sky protocol. Uh, the issue is. I'm not sure some of this stuff is fully available yet in the controller. And, uh, and, and let, let me know. Uh, let me know if you guys would like to see any other flights on, like the the Carbon Cub or the Extra 300. I still have those planes in the car. I got battery packs. You know, just let me know if you guys want to see more flights on those. Um, you know, or you know anything that you guys really want to see. Just let me know in the chat. I'll, I'll try to make it. I'll try to make it happen. It's been really cold here lately. And the last three days before that, uh, it snowed for three days. Um, however, it was the, the ground was so warm that as soon as the snow hit the ground, it all melted. So we still don't have any snow on the ground here, barely. But yeah, yeah guys, I still have to. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I was just going to say, yeah, oh, Jeff in Lower Alabama, I, I'm pretty sure you're pretty darn close to Mr. Bus Driver. Who's that, Kenny? Yeah. He's down in Florida? Yeah. Yeah, Kenny's in Florida, yep. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, the retracts yeah. on this Dynam uh, bird work awesome, you guys. I have cycled them in and out, in and out, a hundred times, man, and they work great. I haven't had them hiccup not once yet. Um, actually, here, I'll plug it up for you guys so you guys can check it out. After you do that, you have someone say, check your PayPal. Okay, hey, so guys, at the end of the show, I will check the PayPal, and uh, I will give everybody a shout-out who left donations uh, for next week. Um, and like I said, you guys are always going to get my $250. That's, that's your money. That's what I donate to the channel every month for you guys so that we can at least do some type, type of a giveaway. Um, 
So even if we don't have a lot of donations, we can still do a giveaway. You know what I'm saying? So Dave did a mod on this bird to take a bigger battery. And basically just modded the canopy, you guys. You want to aim the camera down just a little bit? Because we're only seeing a little bit of one wing and just barely the nose. There you go. And I'll make my screen smaller so it's not blocking. All right, so let's bring this this way like that, and then that like that, and then you guys can see the battery bay. And um, yeah, so here it is, guys, and it, that's that is the but that is the buffer, and it squeezes right in there, man. And I'm telling you, it's it's tight, it's a tight fit back here, but I got both my wires hanging out the top, which is exactly what we want. Uh, I do have a gyro in there as well, you guys. So this is one of your tactic receivers is what you're saying. <laughs> and, and the fan sounds, it's, it sounds pretty raspy uh, until you actually get it like full bore and then... Then she sounds a little. Then she sounds a little better, um, but yeah, man, the five thousand fits in there great. You guys, I couldn't believe it. And then I'll, I'll put the canopy on it right quick so you guys can see that the canopy does go on. So you've had the best luck with signal with your tactics by doing that with the antennas. That's why you said that. Yes, yes, that's why I have the and then the retract. You guys, they work great. Let me pop, yeah. let me pop this up. Compared uh, to the old school ones that didn't like the cold. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Did I not? Did I not have it on there? Right. Oh no, that's right. Um, hold on, guys. I gotta put this on the right. There we go. It works great. Oh. While you're showing this bird off, I should say it is sponsored by BitGo Hobby, you guys. This yes, is a BitGo Hobby is review. This is a Bit BitGo Hobby review, guys, for this plane, man. Um, so once again, thank you to Jing and Bobby and all you guys over there at BitGo for hooking a brother up. And uh, just know that any planes that I get on Dave's RC that are Dynam planes, unless I have like a, a small little light for them, I keep them. Um, but um, but as you guys can see, she balances out nicely right there with the 5,000. So, RC flyby, he has not had a chance to take it out yet because it's been way too cold. It's been and way it, too cold, but and it right took there, a while to build nice. it too because it's not like some of your even, it's not like the 64 millimeter free wing birds where you just glue the two wing halves together and glue the tail on there and good to go. Like, it's kind of a pain putting together. Yes, it, it, it was it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to put together, but I'm telling you right now, man, this thing is going to fly great. I could tell the 5,000, it actually adds nothing for weight to this plane, you guys. Like, when you pick it up, you're like, where did that 5,000 weight go? You know? It, it really holds the weight nicely. I can't wait. I can't wait to get out and fly it. Um, it's going to be great. I got a high rate and a low rate put in. That's my low rate. Yeah, it looks good, man. Rudder still needs to be adjusted just a little bit. guys i like a lot of throwing the rudder but yeah she uh she looks good you guys can't wait to get it out and fly it i'll probably just take right off in high rate or low rate low rate looks looks pretty good I, I might go high rate first i'm not sure oh crap what's up reckham's here oh show's over guys we'll talk to you later <laughs> um 
Wreck em Roy, I started messing around taking apart your PT-17 as well, you guys. So that's going to get sent out to Roy. Uh, like I was saying earlier, um, you know, Bitco and Dynam, they really get their money's worth out of the planes that they send me. Because I am gonna I actually will take them and send them to another person or another YouTuber uh, to do their review on it. So I'll build it, put it together, send it off to someone else who can actually do a review on it as well. Like Roy's getting the PT-17. Um, and Eric's getting this Dyna Meteor when I'm done with it. Uh, so that they can go do a flight review on it as well. Uh, that's why I told Eric, I'm sending it to you. You got to do a flight review on it. You got, you actually got to go fly it, whether it crashes Watch or not. Watch the fly the Skytrain that you're sending me too, because it's a bit guild bird. And then also, yeah, the, the Skytrain. I, uh, I'm sending that also to Eric. The Skytrain, as you guys know, is modified too as well. So basically, all I had to do to modify that to get that to fit in there, guys, was to cut off that bottom lump. And then he smoked out the canopy. And then, yeah, I took the canopy and, and painted it like this brick red color. It looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. But, um, yeah, here, while we got a couple of seconds, I'll check the PayPal and give you guys, give you guys your shout outs. LJ was making such a big deal to see your Super Saber the other night, and he's not even here. Yeah, I kept, I kept it, I kept it in the back. John Nunes, thank you, right? David Snyder, you 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 mean you mean oh mean oh son of a gun. David Snyder, just uh, okay. So I'll go through it. Mr. George Watts, thank you, of course, as as always. Um, David Snyder, George always sends twenty five dollars. George sends twenty five dollars a week relig religiously to the uh, channel. You guys, uh, he never misses a beat. He's a, he's always he, he's always done that. He does that for just about every YouTube channel that has a live stream, which is cool, which is awesome. Uh, David Snyder sent a hundred dollars. Um, John Noon, Nunez, uh, John Nunez sent twenty-five. So there you go, guys. Now we have enough to do a nice little giveaway. Um, real quick, Craig Bevan just got in here. Your Dave might have just gotten the batteries, Craig. So here soon, uh, they'll be coming your way. Yep, that's it. His is one. That's one of his is one of the last things that I got to send off. Uh, and then I got the Raptor to send off. I don't. I want to make too much guss about it because I don't want him to hear me and then say, "Oh, it's coming, coming." Listen, everything is getting sent out this 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 coming week. Eric's box is going out. The PT seventeen is going out. I mean, I find myself saying that a lot that I have to send stuff out, but that's because every month I find myself doing something to give something else away and then have to send something else out. So um, sometimes it can be a pain in the butt, you guys, having to send stuff out all the time. It's uh, it's um. It, it can turn into a little bit of a headache once in a while. But we get it done, and we make sure that everybody that gets something on this channel, they get what they're supposed to get. That's that. And that's, that's the most important part, is that you guys get your shit. Um, but, yeah, sometimes it can be discouraging looking at all the stuff that you have to send out. You don't have a box. You don't have any way of shipping it. Well, uh, you have you an have avenue a for a box yeah. now, though, Ray and Robbins. So Ray and Robbins, yeah, that's been my that's been my biggest like relief lately is that Ray and Robbins usually will have boxes there, especially airplane boxes where you know they have some of the biggest RC airplanes you know that, that people can buy. So uh, for mine isn't an airplane box; it's a fireplace box. Yeah, the pot the, the the box that my wife's fireplace thing here came in is actually the box that I'm sending off Eric's planes in because it was big enough to fit all four of his planes. Um, it's also going to be over a two hundred dollar box to send. So I also um, paid for that shipping too, though. Yes, and Eric did pay for all that shipping. He did. But so, I yeah. bought a bird off of him, and there's a couple that he no longer wanted. That he said I could have too. So. Uh, yeah, I'm giving you the um, the Dynam Tempest because uh, Connor passed on it, and then the Dynam uh, Pitts Python, which is an awesome plane, by the way. The Dynam Pitts Python is an it's an excellent plane. Excellent, excellent plane, you guys. That is probably one of the nicer planes that Dyna makes, and, and as far as that plane flies and how it flies, oh, what a great plane. What an awesome flying plane. And it flies just as good inverted as it does right side up. I mean, it, you, if, you, if you roll it over onto its side, you don't have to give it any stick movement at all. It literally will just stay like this, which is what those planes are supposed to do, um, those right. type of sport high planes and stuff. Reckham, you're not pressuring Dave at all. It's just because you want to hear from Grandma. Yeah, we know, Roy. We know it's just because you want to hear Grandma. 
We know we know it's because you want to hear from grandma. We get it. You know, we we know you dirty dog. No, um, so what, basically what I was going to do, uh, Reckham, is I was actually going to do one more flight on the PT-17 before I box it up and sent it to you. But then all this talk of me and Eric messing around with you saying that we crashed it and just playing around, goofing around, <laughs> chances are I go out and fly it and we will put it in the freaking turf. So <laughs> I'm just going to send it to you while it's in one piece before I take it back out and fly it again and do something silly. Uh, I want you to actually enjoy the plane like I did. I, I enjoyed the flights that I put on it. I put two flights on it, and I absolutely love that plane. The bird like uh, takes uh, off by itself. It does take off by itself. All you got to do is punch the throttle and she's in the air and she, just what a beautiful flying plane. What an awesome, awesome flying plane. Uh, kudos to, to Dynam on that PT-17. They did a really wonderful job on that plane and it wasn't very hard to put together. It was very simple. It was a very simple build. The hard part is um, all the scale guy wires, but you didn't put those on because you knew Reckham was going to be getting it. No, they're still in the package, Reckham. If you decide that you want to put them on when you get it, by all means, go ahead. But I left them off during my flights. Um, I also left off the wheel pants and I left off the um, the decals. Um, so, just want to make sure that you know that when you get that plane, all that stuff you can put on it yourself. Um, I didn't put it on. I just wanted to see how the plane flew and do a test flight for Dynam and sh you know just sh do the best video that I could on that one video because I knew that I was going to be passing it off to you afterwards and I definitely didn't want to do too much with it and then end up crashing it so that you didn't have to, you didn't get to enjoy your time with it. So, and same thing for, uh, for, um, for Eric with this Dyna Meteor. I'll put a couple of hacks through it. We'll do a couple of flight videos on it, a couple of review videos on it, and then I'll send it off to Eric and then he can show you what he can do with it. Um, LJ, your ears must have been burning, Sarge. Eric was just talking about you, bro. There's something in the back for you, because you said free the saber the other night. So there's something in the background if you look. Oh, free the saber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know when they wanted me to go get it. Yeah. Yeah, she's out here, man. I just I just actually just fixed that rear wheel retract. The wheel was actually spinning in its mount. Uh, so every time I goose the throttle to go, it would turn sideways and act like a brake. This, the wheel would be right sideways. So I actually I fixed the wheel, so it's not doing that anymore. Mm. Oh well, Man. Bill, it rained all day here too. I yep. stole GB's weather for, from up there in Washington. Roy and Ray, uh, Roy and GB's weather. Oh, great. <coughs> Have fun with that, LJ. I mean, good for you, but uh, have fun with that. I got the chat back over here. I got the chat sitting behind me instead of in front of me. Sarge just read listed. Oh. Mr. George Watts, man. George, you're you're awesome, man. You're an awesome dude, man. Keep keep being you, man. That's all I gotta say about you, George, man. Just keep being yourself, man, because you're an awesome, awesome dude, man. David Snyder, Michael Covington, all you guys, man. Um, like I said, you guys, you guys, Spencer Keith, you guys make the you guys make those giveaways what they are. Um, and that's well, cool because Dave's that's getting that's, his own bird next next month too. Yeah, I got I got a big one showing up here, you guys. A big one, a big one. <laughs> Don't make him <laughs> over expect. I'm not rich by any means. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the two six two. Oh no! Oh, I thought I thought you were I thought you were talking about the, that plane. Yeah. So yes, I got a couple. I got I have a. Um, Eric's getting me an F nine F Panther because I retired mine. Mine it thinks got over a hundred flights on it. Uh, logged flights, like le legit logged, like, you know, scratched off in a book, you know, one, two, three, you know. We did over 100 flights on the MiG, you know, just under 100 on the first Sabre, or right at 100 flights on the first Sabre, and the second Sabre's already got like 20 plus flights on it, the little one. And uh, Eric was asking me, you know, what what, what, what would I like if, if, uh, if I was going to get another, you know, replace one of the 64 millimeter planes? And I was like, well, probably... Probably the MIG. I thought the MIG was probably one of the nicer flying ones. Um, and uh, they were out of stock, so he actually got me a Panther. He's going to send me a Panther at the beginning of the month. 
So we have a brand new panther to fly for the winter. That'd be nice. That would be really nice. And then uh, you guys, I've got the uh, HSD two six two. It means you saved up it will be, for it. It will be ordered. It will be ordered this week, you guys. I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. No wonder you wanted to get mine and Roy's planes out. You need the room. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 I, I imagine the box alone that that two six two is probably pretty big. Yes, so I'm excited, you guys. The HSD two six two, man. The the ME two six two is probably one of my favorite remote control flying planes. Uh, I love the way the two six two flies. It's just a very beautiful presence. They got in the something sky. right because most commercial planes are a similar format: two wings, two engines under the wings. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we learned a lot from the Germans in that plane. We learned a lot by those guys and the shape of the plane and the way it flew. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that the Red Tails were actually able to take down a few of those things, man, because that, that was probably why. just bad piloting. That's, that's, all, that's all I chalk that up to be is just I can tell piloting. you why. So not only did they have problems with the engines not um, being reliable, but um, they didn't have the combustion chambers good enough so if you push the throttle too quickly you could cause them to flame out and so oh, Jesus Christ. so on the me 262 you had to accelerate and slow down real carefully because it, the combustion chambers could not handle the excel the change in throttle very well so like yes they could go 500 plus miles an hour but you couldn't just all the way to the firewall and then get there you had to slowly well, i tell you what man the flying shape of that plane and the way the rc model flies it, it's it's like pilot ryan said he said it best it, it's like a warbird with jet engines it flies like a warbird with jet engines it flies a lot like that tiger cat does so if you took the tiger cat and put edfs in it that's pretty much the 262 uh, also, the Gloucester Meteor flies really nice too. The Dynam Gloucester Meteor. GB, you're it's correct. Got the same. What's that? He said they can't turn very tight. Very, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they were not a turn a tight turning plane. They were not a very maneuverable plane. They were meant to boom and zoom, guys. What that means is they were meant to get up above the bombers, dive down at the bombers through the fighters, shoot as many of the damn bombers as they possibly could. Get out those there. Four giant thirty mil cannons, and then swoop back up and just keep doing it and then swoop back up. And the P-51s wouldn't be able to chase them up that high. They just they just wouldn't have the climb uh, at that altitude. They wouldn't be able to climb as that good. Uh, I mean, already uh, when a P-51 is that high, its supercharger is already running max because it's trying to pump as much air into the intake as it possibly can. So when you're at bomber altitude, the P-51s, they're already, they're not struggling by any means, but I mean, you take a jet engine, you know, that's creating its own power, basically, and it's not being propelled along. Um, when a, when a jet gets up that high, the, the prop planes just they just can't chase. They they can't give chase. They might be able to chase them into a dive, and, and and that's how those those red tails were getting them in that movie. They were they were they they were coming in a little too slow, and then they would start diving down below the bombers, and and those P fifty ones would already be in a dive, already chasing after them, and uh, they they would be able to get that one opportunity. And uh, those 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 T Tunguski Airmen, I don't know if they, if they were that accurate in real life, uh, but those were some real accurate shots that they were firing in that movie, man. They were some uh, pretty good shots that, that were fired in that movie. I know it's a movie, and I know it's you know glamoured out and stuff, uh, but some of the shots that they made in that movie, they, those were uh, some 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 fairly accurate shots. Um, so uh, yeah, awesome stuff, man. I can't wait to get that two six two, you guys. Um, I got two brand new 6,000 packs uh, in the battery order that uh, Craig Beaven's batteries came Correct. in. I got two 6,000s of my own ready for that plane, man. Brand new packs, fresh packs, ready, ready to go. Sorry, I just got a message. I'm not ignoring. Oh, okay. Uh, but yes, uh, so the reason that that plane uh, was out was because it needed the back the back retract was literally like the strut where the strut goes into the retract it was actually spinning because that 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 grub screw was not tight enough so i took the grub screw out put some loctite on it and then tightened it back in there myself and tightened it down so now it's not spinning 
So now we can get it and go take it for a flight. I'm just, it's really cold right now, you guys. And it's, it's pretty dangerous to go out and fly in these kind of temperatures. Um, the huh. coldest I've ever flown a plane. What's the coldest I've ever flown a plane, Eric? What were we like 18 or 19 degrees? What was it when you flew the, the, um, Futura? Okay, so the Futura, yeah, we were we were uh, we were in single digits that day, I believe. Maybe it was like but twelve, it, maybe. It but was it also degrees. has really high quality servos and stuff in it too. Though. Yeah. So, uh, and then another really cold flight that I had was um, uh, when I got the havoc stuck in the tree. It was like negative ten degrees that day. Um, it was cold when you uh, lost the stinger 90 but that wasn't while you're flying that was when you're trying no to no it. yeah so that was the next day i went to go look for the stinger 90 i actually got frostbite on my hands that day you guys i had to go to the hospital it was actually pretty bad my hand was like swolled up it was like um it was, it was bad it was real bad I, I messed my hand up good that day and it's because i had it out of my i already have a cold weather hazard on this hand anyways because it, it throws to a car door handle when I was uh, when I was stationed in Alaska, I took my hand out of my Arctic mitt, and my hand was all nice and warm and sweaty, and uh, it's like sticking your tongue to a pole. When it, you know that's exactly what happened. My hand froze to that car that car handle, and it was there for a good 15 minutes, stuck. Because if I would have pulled it away, I would have ripped the skin right off my hands. Uh, while this old lady went into her house and in, back into the apartment building, she came out with a, a lukewarm bucket of water, slowly started pouring it over my hand to get my hand free. Uh, and I had frostbite on all my fingertips, burnt my fingers. Like it was like almost like third degree burns on my fingertips. Um, and I had my hands out of my gloves carrying that Stinger 90 back to the truck. And it was, a, it was a pretty far walk. It was over a mile, you guys. Um, and by the time I got back to the truck, my, my middle finger had turned completely purple and was frozen. I, I knew it was, I knew it, I already knew that it had happened and I was just going to settle in and wait for the pain to start. And sure enough, and three o'clock that morning and I'm getting rushed to the hospital, man, because my hand is just on fire. Uh, it was so bad. It was so bad. That's the thing about frostbite, man, is it, it takes a minute before it actually activates, before it actually starts kicking in. Well, it's not uh, like a hot up, burn. Yeah. It's not like a heat burn where you feel no. it almost immediately. A cold injury, right. like, I mean, my feet being messed up, part of that's from cold injuries when I was in the Army, and that was over 10 years ago. Right. Yes. And so when, a, when it, it does burn you exactly like fire does, but it takes a little bit longer for it to settle in, to set in, to actually the, for the pain to actually start. Um, but yeah, man, once it does, it is excruciating pain. Um, I mean, you pretty much you you killed you you burnt and destroyed some of your nerve cells, your nerve endings. Um, and then when your 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 butt your body starts pumping blood back into those, and when it can finally get blood to the nerve endings again, boy oh boy, do you feel the pain? The pain, and that's oh, that's this starts signaling signals to your brain. Frostbite you hurts, just, especially if it's severe. Exhaust like pipes that. hurt. Yep, exhaust pipes suck. I've burnt myself on an exhaust pipe a few times. Um, yeah, Close quite enough, a few times. Lee, I'm in Idaho, buddy. We get really cold sometimes. But yeah, guys, super, super, super awesome, man. 45 people in here. I appreciate every one of you guys being in here right now, man. Absolutely awesome, man. Ken Sprouse, I see you in here, man. Yes, um, Nate, they had problems with the fan blades breaking on the on the the Yumo engine on the on the T six two. Oh, dude, you want to know what kind of a plane I would like to see? I would like to see someone come out with. Um, didn't you show me someone actually made a motor that actually flew like that, Eric? So hang on a second. The... My daughter's asking for something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm thinking of the name of the plane right now. Oh, the Wyvern. Remember you showed me the UCRC uh, video? Hi, sweetie. How you doing? What a cute. He's so cute. Um, yeah, so yeah, anyways... Um, Eric sent me this video of this wyvern, and he actually has the props, one going this way and one going this way. Because on a wyvern, it's actually a turbo or a supercharged or a turbocharged, supercharged or turbo car, turbocharged. Turbo prop. I think it's yeah, it's a turbo prop. Yeah, turbo prop. And uh, one fan actually, one one prop actually spins this way while the rear one goes this way, 
And someone actually made that as a design and put it together and, and actually made it a working engine and uh, and actually have a real working Wyvern. That should be the next RC electric RC plane that comes out. That's what they should do. I think that a Wyvern is, 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 is the next RC prop plane that should come out. That is a badass plane. It is an awesome plane. <laughs> Look what Dana matter. just said. <laughs> Who? Dana's RC. Oh, Dana. Always yeah. joking about sand, so they said, uh, sounds like a sand burn to me, Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you, uh, yeah, that's sand. I'm telling you right now, man, you get sand in places you didn't know you had. Just, I'll put it that way. Especially and over sometimes in the middle you don't have east. access to a shower, so you have to do your baby wipe bath. And I'm telling you right now, baby wipes, when I was over there, those were a commodity, bro. I'm telling you right now. Oh, if, yeah. Everybody, baby wipes were a commodity, man. I'm telling you. That's, I mean, people would be trading packs of cigarettes for fucking packs of baby wipes. So, a commodity. Because when, 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 when the junk starts stinking, bro, and you need to start taking a shower, and there's no available showers, or there, we don't have running water that night or whatever, oh, man, those baby wipes feel so good, man. The baby white baths. LJ knows about the baby white baths. Yes, he just hit me an E8 list. He knows plenty about it. LJ said he's in San Antonio. Thank you. Now I know where to start my stocking missions. Drink all the Pepsi you want and can for me, Battle. I'm drinking as much Pepsi for you as I possibly can, bro. Eric can no longer drink Pepsi or anything with high quality or high quantities of sugar in it because uh, he may be on the verge of being diabetic. So he's got to slow down, slow his roll. Um, not that he won't ever be able to drink Pepsi again, but right now he's got to slow down. He's got to he's got to nurse I himself went down. cold turkey two days ago. I haven't had any since. I'm surprised you got. I'm surprised you haven't ripped out the rest of your hair. Uh, well, it's it's almost gone. No, I'm 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 really really surprised that there's any there right now, man. I remember I, I tried quitting uh, soda cold turkey one time, man. It's my only source of caffeine. Like I don't drink coffee. Uh, sometimes I'll drink uh, hot tea. Um, but it's my like my I have a only source, source of caffeine. Of caffeine it's just it's not through soda now. Yeah, how's that working for you? Is it working good as a substitute? Yeah, I already knew yeah. I needed to quit, so. No, but this, the, the, the beverage that you're drinking now, is it, it, it's working good as an alternative? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But it's got more nat. It's not like soda that has artificial caffeine in it. It's got extract from green tea and coffee in it. So. Yeah, it's got like green tea leaf, green tea root, stuff like that. And it's actual natural, actual caffeine. Not the fake caffeine like this stuff. Um yeah, I, I drink I drink more soda on the weekends than I do any time. And like I'll I'll buy I'll buy this on you know Thursday or Friday, and when it's gone, it's gone. And then I won't pick up any more until probably Monday. Except for Monday's payday, so you may be picking up more. <laughs> we'll pick up more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely like Pepsi, you guys. That's that's one of my it's one of my it's one of the it's like you know I don't eat a lot. Um, and most of my weight that I keep on my body is because of all that sugar that's in that soda. If I didn't drink soda, I'd, I'd probably be a good 40 pounds lighter. Rick, on the stuff I use, it, it does fizz when you mix it into the water. So it's fizzy-ish. It gives them, yeah, it gives them the, it gives them the, the idea that there's fizz there. But I don't want to go on the medicine. They told me I have six months to get a couple of things down. How's your quota for soda? Um, the quota for soda is good. <laughs> the quota for soda. <laughs> what questions nice. you got for Dave? Ryan's yeah. in here, by the way. Okay. So you, if you have any questions about your 262, you're about to drop a fat wad on. You need to ask him. 
Um, I watched Pilot Ryan's um, little videos that he did on it so far. Um, have they done the maiden on that yet? Uh, as of a week ago, he had not had a chance to fly it yet, but that doesn't mean anything. I haven't talked to him since last Saturday. I haven't seen so. anything pop up, that's why I asked, and I have notifications turned on for Ryan. Um, hey, GB, you got my phone number, bro. Text me your uh, address. I have it. You got it? Never mind, don't text me. It, uh, um, um. He also he screenshotted it to me in a, of a text he already sent you with his address. Well, the thing is, is I, I could go in my messages and go through them one at a time because I haven't actually logged your name in on your number in the new phone yet. Um, so I've, I've got it. Don't worry about that. And then I need R.C. Weavens, and he can send that to me via messenger. So the question is, when are you going to fly the Super Saber? Sooner than later. It's, it's one of the next planes that I have up. That, That's like going to be said, a I flying said, field one, though, isn't it? Not necessarily. I mean, I've flown bigger planes at my flying field. Um, if I wait until the, the flying field's open again, I won't be able to fly that until, what, April, March, April, May, May or June or something like that, whenever they open back up. So uh, I think we can get a flight on it. John Graham, this is the Flex Innovation Super Saver. It's a nice one. Uh, we're, we'll be doing the Dyna Meteor tomorrow, though, you guys. That's, I mean, as long as the weather is not as cold as it was today. I mean, even if we can get up above 20 degrees during the day, I, I'll, I'll trust it. Well, um, LJ, it's called his old phone crapped out on him. And when people message him with his new phone, he doesn't have yeah, the info it. of who, who that is. Yeah, so I don't have your names attached to your numbers right now. So that's, I mean, I do with uh, quite a few of you, but there's still uh, a bunch of you guys that I have to log your name in with your number. So in that package for Reckham is going to go the fan you owe him too, isn't it? Yeah, he's, well, yeah, well, the fan I'm giving him, yeah. Because he bought your flex jet off you. He bought the flex jet, but he bought it without a fan in it. Um, and, um, I took the flex jet fan out of the uh, Super Scorpion, the FMS Super Scorpion, and, and put a 1550 KV uh, brushless outrunner in it, a three wing one, three wing fan unit. Um, the broken FMS fan is going to Hamilton's hangar, and the flex jet fan is going to Roy, and that'll be in his PT17 box. Yes. Uh, Thunderstruck is saying you need to come down there uh, this next weekend to E-Jets and fly it down there. What's that? Fly what? The Sabre. Shit, man. What, drive down to Florida? Oh, man. I don't know about that. At least the states <laughs> out have... there are small, <laughs> but it's still really far. Maybe, maybe if they maybe if they had it closer, man. Like yeah. I, there should be a more central spot, like you know, I don't know, like Virginia. Virginia seems like a, a nice spot for everyone. Now you know how Reckham and GB and John VHRC and I feel, where we're all up in the Pacific Northwest. You guys got to do your own event up there. That's what you guys got to do. You guys got to do your own event where you guys get together and do your own thing somewhere up there. Maybe you guys can do it right on Four Corners. Four Corners is southwest, buddy. Is that is that real? Yeah, that is really far south, actually. Yeah, that is. But there's You're Arizona, northern Utah, Idaho. Are you, Nevada. Are you northern Idaho? Like, are you in the little, like, chimney part of Idaho? No, I'm in the southwestern part. Oh, Okay. Cause I drew, I, I drove through the chimney part on my way over to Montana. You went through the shortest part of Idaho. Yeah. It only took me, well, it was all mountains and it was twisty, windy road. That's all I remember. It was nothing but mountains. Cause from where I'm through. at, Montana is about a seven, eight hour drive. So. And it literally took me damn near two months to get home or two and a half months to get home when I drove when I when I ETS from the army I drove from Alaska all the way down to Washington state which took 
damn near three weeks. And then uh, from uh, Washington State over to Maine, which took about another two weeks. Not of straight driving, obviously. I, I Yeah, he you know, drove I, across I Idaho up near Coeur d'Alene. That's correct, Dave Snyder. Yeah, I drove across the top of Idaho. And then I, th- I think the coolest place that I was at was Montana, where they had no speed limit. No speed limit in Montana, man. And I think I got you, my that's car. That's a like state you want to die in after driving through, let me tell you. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can make quick work of the state because you literally, I mean, I was going 120 for about a good 60 miles one time just because I could. It was a dead straightaway. And I just said, I'm just going to put the freaking damn accelerator to the floor. And I did, man. And I was like, it, the governor kept kicking in right around 122 miles an hour and it kept moving. And then it would go back to like 112. And then it would... like <laughs> It was pretty fun. Um, I didn't think that little car could go that fast. And it did, man. 122 miles an hour before the governor kicked in. All I know is when I went to my brother's wedding in Billings, when you cross the border right where Bozeman is at to Billings, it was like a six-hour drive. Oh, really? Yeah. Montana is the state that does not end when you're driving east to west or west to east. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing, is the only thing that makes it go by quick is the beautiful scenery coming out of the foothills, like coming out of the mountains into the foothills. Oh, it's beautiful. These running rivers that are going next to the roads. Like you can see, like from the road, you can see the fish jumping in the river. Like there's these big ass like salmon, king salmon or whatever they were. They, they might not have been king salmon, but... Or trout or whatever. No, they were salmon. They were definitely had to be salmon. They were big, man. They were big fish. You could see them just jumping, man, jumping in that water up the, up the streams. You know, you'd see the cascades and the rapids coming down. You'd see the fish jumping. I mean, it was just beautiful, man. I'd never seen – like Alaska was pretty. Alaska was probably one of the most beautiful places that I'd ever been. But Montana, second most beautiful place I'd ever seen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place, man. Oh, I know, LJ. It's the same thing when you fly over Texas. I don't care. Texas is a state that don't end even when you fly over it. Yeah, Texas is pretty rough too. Yeah, Arizona is not, not, not too small either. When you go, actually, I think you go from Arizona into Texas, or is it New Mexico? No, it's New Mexico, New Mexico right? First. Yes. New Mexico. Correct, New He's Mexico lucky is also another state out. that takes forever to get across. That's actually a pretty big state too, man. The one thing you have in Montana and... South Dakota that you don't have most other places is lots of roadkill along the road from people going a hundred and the animal steps out in front of them. Oh yeah, they get blasted. And that's a lot. That I, I tell you, I did. I saw a lot of dead deer driving through Pennsylvania, and Ohio, and in Indiana. Saw a lot of dead deer on the highway. That was probably one of the the biggest. Like every every you'd see a big blood spot just appear out of nowhere. And uh, then you'd see a carcass of a deer sitting off on the side of the road. But yeah, man, super super. Super nasty stuff, man. I probably saw about 20 dead deer just on the way to Jet Jams and on the way back. It was, uh, it was, a, it, was a, it was some of these, some of these, uh, these, these, these sites were bloody. And the deer horrific. out there are small compared to them out here, by the way. Yeah, they were small. They were, they were little deer, man. Yeah, they, they were little deer. I, I remember because the deer that we have here in Maine, they're big. We got big buck up here in Maine. Uh, some of the biggest white-tailed deer that you'll ever find are right here in the state of Maine and in northern, uh, southern Canada. Um, some Crack of the down. biggest. biggest A lot of people will destroy their cars from uh, wildlife in Montana. I was worried. I was really worried. That was one of my biggest fears was one of those little deers jumping out in front of my Jeep and being just totally stranded. Um, well, what really one messes fears. a car up is if a elk, full-grown bull elk or a moose jumps in front of you. When you're going 60, 70 miles an hour, bro, anything that jumps out in front of you is going to cause damage. That, yeah, but I, a I, bull my moose can, hit a, deer. a full grown elk, bull elk can be close to 1,000 pounds, and a moose, you can be over oh, 1,000 pounds. That, that would probably kill you. That would probably absolutely kill you. Um, my parents, they had an old Chevy celebrity uh, station wagon, like, a, like an 89 or a 90, 1991 celebrity station wagon. And it was literally, we were. I, I used to grow up in the house right next door to where I live now. Um, and they were going down River Road one night, 
and they came home and the grill was busted out of the car, the headlights hanging out of the car, the hood's freaking dented in, the the, the, the roof of the car's dented in, the, there's, uh, the side view mirror's busted off, like, what the hell happened to the car, man? And this was all from just a small dough. She jumped out and as she was coming back down to the ground, as soon as her front paws hit the ground, my parents hit them smash. Um, I went out there the next day looking for that deer because if it was wounded and it was dying, I was going to put it out of its misery, man. And we jumped that deer probably about 50 yards into the woods, man. And there wasn't a damn thing wrong with that thing, man. She jumped. She was bouncing around. I was like, there ain't nothing wrong with that deer. That, that car took more damage than that deer did. Um, apparently, they hit her front legs. And probably just before they hit the ground so they weren't stuck. Not to mention hooves are real slippery on, on pavement. So when, when when the car hit her, she just kind of rolled up over the car, you know what I mean? She took out the side view mirror with one of her legs on the way back. Um, she, they must have hit her at just the right angle, you know, because she wasn't limping or nothing. She had both feet, you know, she was jumping. I was like, that's got to be her, man, because you could see where she had fur missing from her, where the, the car actually hit her. Um, but that's one thing that you got to be careful of here in Maine. On really, really cold nights, the deer like to get up and walk around to stay warm. You know what I mean? They like to keep their blood pressure their, their blood pressure up by walking around. And the more they walk, you know, you guys know how it is when you're working outside and you've got a de-layer. Well, that's what deer do. They they walk and walk and walk and they'll cross roads. And that's one of the biggest things you got to be worried for here in this state is those deer, man. When they start getting up and walking around, man, they just – it's like they wait for the car to come. They're sitting there on the side of the road and they're staring at the car coming. And then they just decide to jump right when the car gets there. It's, and the so, squirrels do the same thing here. Um, I was barely in um, Kenny's show last night, but did anyone else hear about Joseph Youngblood? What's the matter with Joseph? I think somebody said he passed away. What? Joseph Youngblood passed away? Yeah. I was just talking to him. I was actually just talking to Joseph. We are actually texting back and forth not that while, not too long ago. How did he pass away? Mm, I'm not sure they know. January 8th of COVID. I was just getting ready to say, I was just talking to him like three or four weeks ago. Maybe it was a little bit longer ago than that. I was, right, was it around Christmas? Maybe it was around Christmas. <laughs> was he what? Oh, it's just a picture that LJ sent me that I'm going to have to send to you. Oh, nice. Air Marshal told us last night. Oh, no shit, huh? Uh, I didn't have to be hospitalized, but if you're one of those people that get sick from it, that crap is not something to fool with. I'll tell you that much. Roach Coach, Roach Coach was just saying, yeah, Dave, we're dropping like flies, man. No shit, man. Like, every time I turn around, man, I mean, there's a few of you guys that I was worried about, like Victor and George, man. I was, I was legitimately worried about that. I had no idea that Joseph even had COVID. Um, well, it, when you, at least for me, the first day I had any symptoms, it felt like I just had, was going to have a cold and a day later it was like full on kick me in the pants kind of bad. Damn, man. Damn. What do you got for time, Eric? Oh, that sucks, Ken. Uh, we've been at 59 minutes. Okay, so we're right. We're right at our hour. We are right at our hour. He was in the Zoom. Yes, yes, Dana, yes. He was in the Zooms. Yep. That's too bad, Ken. Neighbor's car was stolen. His dog passed away. What the fuck? What? Dog died this morning, and my neighbor's truck was stolen video trying to get in my truck and my wife's car. Jesus Christ, man. 
Holy shit. Sorry to hear about your dog, man. That's painful, man. I know we lost a dog not too long ago, and it's tough. It's, it is. It's like losing a, a GD family family member. I almost and, lost one a couple weeks ago, but yeah. Yeah, Eric, Eric almost had to put one down. Um, just it's it's not fun. It sucks. It's it's horrible. Like I said, it's like losing a child. It's like losing a fan. It's like losing a child. Losing that dog. Losing our dog Bella was like it was like losing a fucking child. Losing my ferrets was hard, man. I had three ferrets. I had them bitches for about eight nine years, man. And then they finally just started dying off one at a time. Boom, boom, boom. They just started going. And uh, it was probably the most pain, painful thing, probably one of the most painful things that I've ever had to deal with in my life uh, was losing those little guys. So why don't we, um, uh, since we're at the hour, why don't we go, why don't you read off everybody that donated to you? And then we can all right, let me go there. back to the PayPal, you guys. We'll, we'll go, we'll check out the PayPal one last time, see. That's, that's too bad to hear. Sorry about that, Mr. Honeychuck. All right, so George Watts, $25. David Snyder with $100. Crazy. Um, John Nunez, $25. Mr. Donald Atkins, $10. Randy Ruffins, $10. So uh, there you go, guys. That's almost $200 for this next giveaway, plus with uh, George Watts' $75 that he sent prior to this already. Uh, I'll have to go back and check, but I think it's at least $75 plus what he sent tonight. Um, yeah, we're looking at probably like 250 bucks to match with my 250 bucks, you guys. Uh, so that'll work. That'll be great. Michael Honeychuck, I know what you're going through. My grandma passed away two or three months ago, and the same thing right now. Getting someone set up for a funeral and stuff, good luck, because no one wants to do anything because of the virus. Um, so real quick... You guys, yeah, um, Pilot Ryan, I, I got, I'm got. i going to be getting the HSD 262, man, so I'm looking forward to your videos on it, so uh, hopefully you guys can do those videos before I get mine, because I would definitely like to see you guys fly yours before I go messing with mine. Um, it also might be one that I wait for some warmer days, man. I mean, that's a lot of plane up there in the air. Two success um, batteries, and then, what was it, a, a 2S1 to run the receiver? I saw in the picture there was two 2S packs. I'm not sure if, if there has to be two 2S packs or if they were just running two 2S packs. Uh, but in the picture I saw two 2S packs and two 6S packs. So uh, not to mention you got over $1,000 worth of plane itself. I mean, just... It's built really well, though. It's built more like a real plane than it is like these other foamies. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to it, and it's really nice, guys. Um, like I said, Ryan, I hope you put out some videos on it. Um, before I before I before I start messing around with mine too much, uh, but that will be here probably. I don't know, a couple weeks from now, so that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, uh, make sure you guys check out Pilot Ryan tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern time, um, for the Pilots Lounge and all of us hangar rats. Uh, Sunday, there's nothing on Sundays, you guys. Sunday's wide open for any of you guys out there that want to do a live stream. Sunday is looking well, you wide got open. Randy, but That's he's right. Randy a little later. Live stream okay. um, I'm not sure what the boozers are doing if they're going to get back into it. Um, and Monday, Air Marshal Mondays. Don't forget about your boy Air Marshal Dave Marshall on Monday. Unless well, he said otherwise, it'll be flying this week too. So those of you that want to be there for the flying, who's that pilot, Ryan? No, um, the first Monday of the month, Air Marshal does a real flight. Flying. Oh, that's right. I actually, I actually might have real flight for that, Dave. I actually might, I might join you guys this time around. Um, is there anybody else on Mondays? Yeah, that's right. So you got uh, Mr. Mr. Fiery Booty himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiery Booty, Nate. Guniak after him. Time. Yeah, Guniak and Nate. Uh, ten fifteen Eastern time, you guys. That's Eastern time. Um, and then on Tuesdays we got what do we got on Tuesdays? We've got uh, uh, Flight Club, our fl yeah Flight Club with um, with Jeff's Custom RC and Raven Rock RC. Make sure you guys check them out. Eight thirty to nine p.m. Eastern time. Um, 
on Wednesdays. You've got Hamilton's Hangar, which was awesome. Hamilton's Hangar had me on the show this past week. It was great. We were showing off the Super Scorpions, FMS Super Scorpions. Nice plane, by the way, guys. It's a really nice, 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 nice plane. And then you have GB um, after uh, him. So sorry I missed your show this thing. week, GB. I could not stay awake. Yeah, I couldn't keep my damn eyes open after my, I had a, um, I had an abscessed tooth uh, during that whole um, show with Hamilton, man. And I, I was like, you know, I wanted, I, I wanted to be there for Hamilton, but at the same time, I was like, man, when this is over, I'm gonna go sleep like a baby, man. Put that that heat pad on my face and sleep like a baby, or something hot on my face and sleep like a baby. Um, uh, so make sure you guys check out GB on Wednesdays, you guys. On Thursdays, you got Kenny, the bus driver, the kid puncher, the nun slapper. <laughs> he's uh, he's driving the bus, you guys. Um, Hangar 51. Uh, he starts at like 9 p.m. Eastern time as well, I believe. Uh, and then back here again on Fridays, guys. And next Friday is the giveaway, you guys. So make sure you guys are all here next Friday. Um, and we'll do another giveaway. Got this week's this month's giveaway coming up next week, man. Already, it's already here. Move man. the camera believe. down real quick. Bitco Bobby is in the chat. Bitco Bobby, thank you to Bitco Hobby and Jane for the Dyna Meteor. I will be out flying it as soon as possible, you guys, and uh, we'll have a nice flight review on this as well. Um, so yeah, big huge thanks to Bitco Hobby and Jane, and uh, and all you guys from Bitco that. Um, that send me these planes to do these uh, these reviews on, man. I, I absolutely love doing it. I think it's awesome. I think it's cool that they actually even look my way to even do a product review. Um, I appreciate the little things, you guys, and uh, I'm humbled by all the little things. Um, and if, if flying uh, planes for Dynam is the only thing that I'll ever do in my RC career as far as reviews, uh, then I will be absolutely happy with that. I'll be ecstatic to do that for the rest of my, my time. Um, I enjoy the gesture. That's that's what I enjoy. I enjoy the fact that they would actually send me one of these planes for free to do a review on. Uh, that's humbling, very humbling for me. Um, and then I'm going to send it off to somebody after I'm done with it so that they can do a review on it as well. So Bitco's getting the most out of their money when they send me a plane because it's just going to go to someone else so that they can do a review on their channel. And then maybe if they don't want to keep it and they want to send it to someone else, they can do a, give it to someone to do a review on their channel. Uh, but all I know is that they're getting two reviews out of each plane when they send them to me. Um, but that's it. That's all I got for you, Eric. Do you have anything? No. Just fly free or die. The little things. That's it. That is what she said. That is what she said. Um, yeah, Delaware. Thanks, man. Yeah, so this will be like the fourth plane that I've done uh, a review on for uh, Dynam. And uh, <clears throat> definitely appreciate it, man. Super awesome. Love doing it. Um, I get excited when I get one of these planes and just, um, you know, like, like, like even more excited than the planes that I buy for myself. It's, it's much more, it's much more uh, appealing to me to get a plane to do a review on uh, because it's not a plane that I'm buying and doing a review just because. These guys are actually sending me a plane for free to do a review on because they want me to do a review on the plane for them. And that's awesome. Bitco uh, Bobby just and, dropped us an Easter egg in the chat. Bitco Bobby. He said there's a lot of sweet new stuff coming in new airplane lines, and then he gave us the wink emoji. I just I can't wait until the uh, influencers get their hands on the uh, Hawker Hunter. That that I I want I I want that plane, man. Whether I gotta pay for it or not, I want that plane. I I, I want to do a review on it. I want to fly. I want to have it in my hangar. I I want that hangar. I want that Hawker Hunter in my hangar, big time. Um. I just, I just love the Hawker Hunter. I think the Hawker Hunter is awesome. I'm glad that Bitco and, and, and Dynam are the first ones to come up with uh, the idea to have one um, in their lineup. I think that's awesome. Um, you have to do sometimes as a company, you got to do what sells, but sometimes you have to try something different sometimes to get people in your door. You also got to go over to Hobby Squawk and, 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 and all the other uh, forums out there and listen to what people want. If you start giving people what they want, you'll you'll notice your sales will go up. But you you also have to there has to be a, a collaboration of a, a a majority of people that are you know saying they want this particular plane. You can't 
you can't just be there with that one guy in the back like Dave's RC. Hey, he wants the, one of those Italian prop fighters there, the uh, G55. He wants somebody to make one of those. Well, half of you guys don't even know what a goddamn G55S is, let alone know even know what it looks like. It's one of my. It is my favorite Italian prop fighter of all time, the G55S, and it is one bad mamma jamma, man. I mean, that thing was able to keep up with Spitfires and P51. So I mean, it, it was. It was a prop fighter that was uh, well desired in the Italian Ar uh, Air Force. So um, awesome, awesome airplane. Do. But a lot of people, a lot of people don't even know what one is, let alone what they look like. Like I said, it, they're not going to appeal to that. They want to. Oh, okay. Well, these guys want to see a Super Saber. Well, Flex Innovations comes out with a Super Saber because so many people asked for a Super Saber. Well, they did it. Somebody wanted a big giant scale F twenty two. Well, Free Wing did it. You know what I mean? Just like stuff like that. Um, it's, it has to be a majority vote, you know, a bunch of people wanting so A lot of money. Uh, a lot of people have been saying Hawker Hunter, Hawker Hunter. There were so many people in those forums saying that they wanted a Hawker Hunter. Well, Dynam came through. Dynam came through, and they put together a 70 mil Hawker Hunter that looks awesome so far from what I can see. It looks awesome. That's a lot of money up front everything. when they come out with the all-new plane. So Yeah, it is. It is a lot of money up front. And you, and you have to make sure that you're going to sell enough of them to at least make your money back well, and then make a profit. Think of it this way. When you make a part yourself, and it's something that you use a mold for, the mold you only have to use once or twice, and you throw it away, right? They're making hundreds, right, yeah. so the molds they use have to be able to last for hundreds of planes, so that's not cheap. Right, exactly. But anyways, guys, um, I'm going to call it quits for the night. Eric, if you don't have anything, we're going to get the hell up out of here, man. Well, just have a good weekend, everybody. If you guys need some flying done, make sure you guys go out and get some flying done. Enjoy your time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we will see you tomorrow night in the Pilot's Lounge. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC with my host, Shadow Ops. We're out of here, guys.